Okay. So I thank everybody for coming. We're going to take Rashawn a little bit here, but we have door prizes. What? So, <laughs> what? <laughs> wait, you'll find out. But um, I just want to say a few words. Since this is the holidays, this is Christmas, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, um, there's a lot of similarities between Christ and Krishna. Can anybody, like, say what those similarities are? Krishna consciousness and Christ consciousness. Consciousness have that agape, unconditional love of, of all of mankind and all the creatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, the unconditional. Nobody embodies that more than the gopis. Gopis were, uh, didn't care about their own pleasure. You know, even though they're Krishna's girlfriends, they just cared about Krishna's pleasure. But uh, I actually wrote something last year. They had a they had a kind of a Christmas festival in Vandegrift, I think it was Vandegrift, uh, Pennsylvania. I had to write them, so it was, that was his fifteen minutes from where I live. That's oh, really? That's yeah. where I live as well. Toronto. I live in Leechburg, which is oh, right, right next there. to Vandergrift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have a Christmas festival there every year, and the devotees set up a tent, and um, it was nice. I was passing out um, these pamphlets, and I just want to read a couple of paragraphs from when I wrote this. It's just uh, called The Striking Similarity Between the Birth and Activities of Christ and Krishna. So the Christmas story is about the birth of Jesus Christ. It's famous all over the world. The Gospels are telling us about how Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem shortly after, before the birth of Christ. They were poor and suffered many hardships, culminating in having to stay and give birth in a stable. After the birth, the Holy Family had to flee to Egypt as the newborn's life was threatened by the cruel King Herod. So, afraid of the prophecy that he will lose his throne to the new king of the Jews, Herod was desperately trying to kill all the new male children under two in the village of Bethlehem. Now, anybody see the resemblance now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like in, in the long-time devotees? Mm -hmm. In the case of Krishna, the king in question was not Herod, but Kamsal. As the Bhagavatam says, after the wedding of Krishna's parents, Devaki and Vasudeva were being driven home by Devaki's brother, King Kamsa. And a prophetic, unembodied voice announced, Kamsa, you fool, don't you know that the eighth child of this woman will kill you? And uh, so he was very cruel, so he drew, drew a sword to kill his own married, newly married sister, right on the chariot as they were coming home from the wedding procession. And But Vasudev... Um, even though he knew the prophecy was probably true, he he had to do what the needful was. You know, he had to protect his newlywed wife, and so he, you know, it's like it's up to us to act, but we depend on Krishna for the result. And if we try, then uh, Krishna will indemnify all of our faults or mistakes. But um, Vasudev convinced him somehow or other that. Uh, you know, first of all, he tried to reason with him with logic and philosophy and say, you know, everybody that's born is, has to die and this and that. But finally, he, he made a promise. And back then, 5,000 years ago, people's promises meant a lot more than they do now. And so he promised that, don't worry, I will give you every single child that's born in Devaki. And so he convinced him, you know, because... Kamsa, even though he was a demon, he and he was actually um, the sister of, or the brother of, of Devaki, and he was the king, but he knew the value of Vasudev's words, and so he let him go. And, um, you know, You know, Kamsa, you know, refrained from his heinous deed for the time being. But later, to be on the safe side, Kamsa threw the couple into a dungeon for several years and killed each child as it was born. You know, infanticide. And just like Herod, 
Kamsa too committed the crime of infanticide. But all his plans failed because Lord Krishna appeared to Devaki and her husband Vasudev in a four-armed form, in the prison cell, and um, as the eighth child. But by the inconceivable potency of Krishna's mystic power, um, all the shackles and the locks of the prison do doors came open and the guards fell asleep. Krishna can put anybody to sleep. They actually have a weapon like that in the war, like the Kurukshetra war, they have a yawning weapon. <laughs> they had so many weapons, you know, they actually have a nuclear weapon too but it can pinpoint exactly where they want to put it. But you have to know with how to withdraw it, otherwise it can just destroy the entire universe. You know, they should make a Star Wars movie about that. Actually, Star Wars is based on the Ramayana, but uh, they should make a story about the Mahabharata and all those different stories. But, um, you know, it, so the Vasudev escaped from the jail cell after the, the doors came open and the guards were all asleep. And... Uh, he exchanged Krishna for the newborn child of Yashoda in Nandagram. And he had to cross the, villa, across the uh, river, it was a raging river, it was a big storm at the time. But Ananta put his hood. See Ananta on the Shringadev's? Uh, behind the Shringadev there's the, those snakes. So he, perform, he formed an umbrella over Krishna so he wouldn't get wet. And um, so, but even after Krishna was taken elsewhere, Kamsa sent numerous terrible demonic children, to, ter terrible de demons to kill the children and kill the child. He, he was looking for Krishna everywhere. He didn't know, he knew he was, you know, Narada Muni told him, Narada Muni's a big troublemaker. And so he told him, you know, there's some, you know, he's somewhere else out there somewhere, you know, and so he wanted to hasten the, the appearance of Krishna, so, and hasten Kamsa's death, of course. So he told them uh, that he's born somewhere else, and so he sent numerous demons, and the first demon he sent was Putana, who was a witch, who could change, transform her body into whatever form she wanted. And so she transformed herself into a beautiful woman, and she looked like the goddess of fortune, and all the, the inhabitants of Raja were just like, you know, thinking that this is the goddess of fortune, she's come to see her husband, you know, and so she walked right into the baby's room, and she had smeared some poison on her breast, and so she wanted to kill Krishna, and, uh, but Krishna sucked out the poison, and at the same time he was kind of angry, so she, he sucked out her life air too. And she assumed her original form, which is like eight miles long, and it crashed down on all the forests surrounding. It didn't kill anybody, but it crashed down on all the surrounding area of Vrindavan. And, um, but the thing is, you know, even though Putana came to kill Krishna, this is how merciful Krishna is, if anybody wants to know. Krishna sees the good in everybody. He doesn't see the bad. So when... Uh, after she died, uh, she was promoted to the position of mother in the spiritual world. That's just inconceivable because she played the part of an earth. But she she got the same the same position as Yashoda in the spiritual world. You know, the mother of Krishna. So. Uh, who would not have such a loving, merciful, forgiving master other than Krishna? I don't know. But, um, you know, so similarly, you know, the infant Jesus was also saved from the wrath of the cruel emperor Herod, and uh, Mary and Joseph were warned by means of an angel, and they were, they urged them to flee with the child to Egypt. And so they escaped too, so... It seems like whenever there's um, an appearance of Godhead, there's always like demonic elements that are uh, opposing that uh, personality. And a lot of times they're just afraid of losing their position, as in the case of uh, Herod. But um, they, uh, Krishna comes whenever and wherever there's a decline in religious principles and a predominant rise of irreligion. At that time he comes himself. He doesn't have to come to kill all the demons. 
But uh, in this age, he can't comes as Lord Chaitanya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are the two figures on the right, right hand side of your right. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are the most merciful incarnations. He doesn't come to kill uh, the demons, but he comes to kill their demonic mentality. They're the ones with their arms are raised up in the air like that. The, wow. And he promoted the Hare Krishna movement back 500 years ago in West Bengal, India, and it spread all over the subcontinent of India. And then finally Prabhupada, who is on the left there, he, uh, he took it to the Western world. We say our obeisances every day after Prabhupada uh, goes, uh, uh, Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paskatra Desatarani. He says, Our obeisances are unto you, O spiritual master, servant of Saraswati Goswami. That was his spiritual master who told him to come to the West in 1932. He said, You're kindly delivering, you're kindly preaching love, the message of Lord Chaitanya Dev and delivering the Western countries, which are filled with impersonalism and voidism. Krishna Khan's is a very personal process. We develop a, a by chanting his holy name, he's invested every, all his energies in that name. And we can realize Krishna's name, realize Krishna in his name and develop a relationship with Krishna and learn how to love him because Krishna has all his energies in his name. And, you know, every single tradition in the world uh, proclaims that, you know, and even in the Christian tradition it says, um, wherever there are two or more of them gathered in in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So it's very important, you know, like uh, the sound vibration, nobody can meditate or do yoga, you know, in some hot yoga studio or something, you know. So because, you know, that's, it, it, there's, it's not possible to concentrate. The original form of yoga was meant to concentrate on the Supreme Personality of God. So the easiest method to meditate on the Supreme Lord is to hear his name. And so that's why we're chanting. The, this name and uh, of course Prabhupada also left all his books. See on that top shelf there, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the, what he was his life's work, and he didn't finish it, but his disciples did.